Hello everyone, welcome to the Jarkus Ranger Review. This time we'll be looking at the fourth episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers Digital Deception. Alright, now this was a really good episode that was centered around Ravi. The whole thing is taking place on Valentine's Day and starts out a grid battle force where the Rangers are receiving all sorts of flowers sent to them as gifts from fans of the public. To which, of course, Ben and Betty have to all take care of and put in the proper place. Until one of them happens to have a bee in it. And a very poor CG looking bee to that as well. <laughs> Even the bees in the bee movie would call that one fake. So the two of them freak out because the place is supposed to be a sterile environment. So they chase the bee only to just get hurt themselves. But not all things are happy in the city of Coral Harbor. For some reason I keep wanting to call it Coral Cove. I don't know where I'm quite getting it from. Maybe something in the past season had a similar name and I just can't remember it at the moment. At any rate, Ravi is pretty down because he can't celebrate the holiday with Roxy. You know, due to the fact that she's effectively comatose at the moment. And he has a flashback to when they first met. He was outside training and then he got injured by going too hard, I think, and she had to carry him back to his car. That's nice. <laughs> well, Devin and Zoe are hanging out at the Riptide Gym. Yes, it has a name now, and yes, it's water theme. Yes, I know Riptide is an actual real thing, but it just sounds like the name of a place in a JRPG to me. <laughs> I don't know why they went with that name for the gym. They could have called it anything else, but this gym apparently has tables, a place to eat, serves drinks. It's basically the juice bar from the Zordon era. Just we see no special person running the place, it just happens to be there. Whether this is an intentional subtle reference or not, I don't know, but it is something I did notice. But eventually the actual plot of the episode starts to take place. Our villains in Dimension X reveal that the avatars retain all the memories of the human cells. But None of the emotion. So Roxy, who knows it's Valentine's Day, decides to play this to her advantage. First, she goes by herself and creates a Robotron out of an excavator. It's called Shoveltron. It starts out just causing chaos, not really going after any more Vex. And it brings some Tronics with it. The Rangers don't get alerted right away. Instead, we have Nate who's out there shopping for flowers. And he bears witness to the scene. So he uses the communicator watch to contact the rangers. Which is actually, can do video broadcasts to them. <laughs> so it's basically like a ranger era smart watch, I suppose. Now the heroic trio don't morph at first. They go and unmorph to fight the enemy. Which I would say is a bad idea, but we got some really good original fight scenes out of it. We get to really see how Devin and Zoe can think on their feet while fighting. And how they have completely different styles of fighting the enemy. Zoe is still being mainly evasive and using her environment to help her, whereas Devin still stays close but dodges all their attacks and hits them all with well-placed attacks. You can tell he is an experienced martial artist here. Ravi, on the other hand, is having to do a shovel charm by himself, and it gets to a point where he's backing up until Roxy trips him with some flower pots, and just when shovel charm is about to finish him off, she steps in the way and tells him to stop, and that they are going back. But not before she takes a moment to stare at Ravi, and then just teleports away. Much to his confusion. Now back at Grid Battle Force, they're trying to figure out what was going on. And Commander Shaw asks what Nate was doing. And he sort of shies away from him an answer. And he just says he was running an errand. However, since he's so important, Shaw decides that he needs an escort wherever he goes whenever he leaves the base. Essentially a babysitter for someone who's basically of an adult age already. So he does not look happy about that. But let's focus on a Blue Ranger again. He ends up back at the spot where he first met Roxy. At which point her avatar shows up and starts talking like the old Roxy. Saying that she can break through the influence of Evox's control every now and then. But that she needs a neural aligner to make her fully good again. And she begs him to do it for her. To help her. And so Ravi again returns to Grid Battle Force. And ends up in and visits Nate's lab, and he proposes the idea, can the aligner, which by the way is the thing that combined the ranger's DNA with animals and also how Evox made his infection in the first place, to the first two rangers? Nate says that's a very good theory, but he would need a lot more research and a lot more data before he could get an actual answer to that. And he resumes working on some device he's building 
or whatever. It's never really shown what it is that he's doing. Well, we see him dealing with some sort of piece of electronic equipment, but we have no idea if it's anything at all, or if it's just to show what he's doing. So while he's consumed in his actual work, Robbie just takes one off the shelf and heads out. And only shortly afterwards do the other rangers show up looking for him, and at three quickly figure out what's going on, that he stole it because of the Avatar. <laughs> Now, when Lonely Blue meets Roxy again, she plugs it up to the console she has, and then uses it on him with the Evox virus. She plans to infect him, make him evil, work for Evox, and help get more facts. It was all a ruse. Man, Roxy's actor is really good. She can be sweet and innocent, and she can be, like, completely selfish and evil at the flip of a switch. And the performance is great the whole time. Much better than Blaze, who doesn't really have much of a personality. Roxy, at least Avatar Roxy, seems like someone who knows what she's doing and won't hesitate to take charge of a situation. Blaze just talks about how strong he is and how he wants to be powerful and beat the Rangers and such. So far we haven't seen anything too special from him other than his regular human self was pretty aggressive and not very nice. However, before any actual damage can be done, the aligner gets blasted away by the other rangers. And in response to that, Roxy just has Shoveltron take over the fight for her right there. But not before returning to Dimension X, where Scrozzle takes it and presents it to Evox, saying that only he can help him escape from the virtual prison with it. And the two avatars don't like it because they know he's trying to one-up them, and basically make them obsolete to uh, Evox. However, also, a Giga Drone of Shoveltron gets summoned. So now we have our Monster of the Week plus the Giant version fighting at the same time. And again, we have the race of Zord just fighting it alone. No help from the other two Zords, because we have two Rangers fighting the ground monster. Of course, the Giga Drone version has two shovels, not just one. <laughs> it can also shoot a bunch of missiles that Devin has a hard time bridging the gap in between. That is until he transforms the races on into cheetah mode. It can basically dart across the ground even faster than vehicle mode. And then finally, it transforms back into warrior mode, and with the sword just jumps through the air and slashes through the Giga Drone and destroys it. Meanwhile on the ground, Ravi and Zoe create a diversionary tactic, where basically Zoe makes a sneak attack, and then Ravi blasts him, then the two of them just use their Beast X cannon to blow him up. And we get this wonderful shot from the side where both the Robotron and the Giga Drone are being exploded at the same time within the same frame. It's not even a split screen. It's just a well done camera angle. That was a great way to end the fight. <laughs> now in the aftermath of this, Robbie is still down about Roxy, especially how he was used. But the Rangers try and cheer him up saying that they just have to keep working together and defeat the Avatar and then he'll be back to normal. He says, yeah, I miss Roxy a lot, but... I'd be a lot lonely without you guys, which is, eh, an okay w way to end his arc for the episode. Of course, we always have to end it on something humorous. First, someone at Grid Battle Force gives Zoe a handful of yellow flowers, saying that they were from her secret valentine. And we see a shot of Nate in the background. He's just smiling a bit because, yeah, they were from him. That's what he was doing the whole time. I really like the character dynamics here. I mean, they already have complex interpersonal relationships with each other, just from what their paths are and how their personalities clash. And not just with the Rangers, but the Rangers and the villains. And this further shows it in great detail. I mean, back in Megaforce, where I forget his name, but the Black Ranger was in the Gia, and they never went anywhere with it. And in Dino Charge, where Shelby and Tyler ended up unofficially dating, it still took forever for them to get to the point with it. Here is very subtle. I mean, Nate is a little shy, so maybe part of his character arc will be more that he can speak up for himself. And the events of this episode is laying a subtle foundation for it. Oh, but the truly slapstick thing is there was a bee inside those flowers, and it flew off into a big empty room with Ben and Betty, who had made a giant sheet of flypaper hanging from the ceiling, trying to catch the bee. Fortunately, it just barely passes over it, and when they try to catch it, they jump into it and get stuck themselves. <laughs> but this was a really great episode from start to finish. I have zero complaints. And both the morph and unmorph action scenes were excellent. I'm really liking how they handled the unmorph battle scenes here, just because it shows off the characters, just the way they move in battle. 
which in a lot of recent seasons, we don't see that. It's just the Rangers fighting without their powers for a little bit, and very little unique to what they can do. Now, obviously, Scrozzo and the Avatars, they didn't like each other at first, but this further shows that they're really out to get it one another. Someone's going to cause the other one to be pretty much entirely screwed over. Whether that happens sooner or later remains to be seen. Devin and Zoe will barely end this episode, but that's okay. This one was all about Ravi, and he's extremely disciplined already. So I don't think he's going to fall for this trap again. But it does strengthen his resolve of fighting against Evox and fighting as a ranger. But this also proves that the Avatars can't run that same trick again because the rangers are onto them. Which means they'll be going to try new tactics and new strategies and new ways to get more facts and uh, stop the rangers from being in the way. And I'm looking forward to see how they take care of this. So for our four episodes ends, and I really have no complaints, you should watch all four episodes of Beast Warfers. Anyway, I got nothing more to add, that's all for this time. It's been Jargus, thanks for watching, and to episode 5, let the power protect you. <laughs> <laughs>